Hello viewers, welcome to today's program with the unveiled Pastor Celestine. On today's program we'll be talking about the Christian training. How important it is for Christians to go to training. Is it important for them to go to training outside the teaching of the church or outside the church? And here today we have a capable teacher of the world, the founder and the president of Rama Bible College, Dr. Richard Oswald Coming. You're welcome. Sir. Hello, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Um, first of all, we are privileged to have you in the house. Thank you. And I know everyone listening today, they have something to gain. And I really want us to meet you. Can you tell us a little about yourself and the, and the, the, the college? Well, for, uh, what I can say about myself is that my Christian faith goes back to 1980. I was born again in 1980 and uh, I had a divine encounter uh, uh -huh. uh, where the Lord Jesus actually took me to heaven before then in 75. Uh, but it would be 1980 when I really, you know, got committed, got a Holy Ghost baptism. And that very day, uh, actually this happened in Nigeria, in a, in a, under Reverend Kumoyi's ministry, you know, in Lagos. Uh, that's why I received my, my, my Holy Spirit baptism. That you mean that's the deeper life? The deeper life, yeah. deeper life church. You know, this Something is 1980. The, the yeah. founder of the deeper life. Yeah, the founder of deeper life, WF, uh, Reverend W. Kumui. Kumui. You know. Now, uh, right after that experience, I, I discovered that God had endowed me with, with prophetic gifts. Revelation gifts. Anybody I met, on, I knew something about them. I knew they, I could see their future, what was going to happen to them, and all that. And then God spoke to me in a, one afternoon, an audible voice that He called me as a prophet and a teacher, you know, and uh, to the nations. Uh, but I had to prepare for 15 years before I entered this office. You mean you had to stay? I had to stay, study, study, and, you know, for 15 for years, 15 good years before coming before, out. Before I was ordained as a prophet. This is it, it, mind it, blowing. It took so many years of training. Wow. You know, studying, you know, the word of God, mm. serving in churches, you know, and all that. 15 good years. 15. 15 good years, good years before for preparation. For preparation, because you see, every ministry has three, 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 three phases. The call itself, the preparation, and the commissioning. Hmm. Unfortunately, in, 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 especially in the African context, people are called, yes, they know they are called, but they skip preparation and commission themselves, self-commissioning. Wow. We're actually going to come to that in a okay. minute, and I mean, this is mind-blowing. I told you viewers, there's a lot to learn from the master today. Thank you, thank you very much for what you have given us so far. You know, talking about Christian training, we know in the uh, in Second uh, Timothy chapter two verse fifteen, and the Bible says, uh, "Study to show thyself approved unto God." Can you throw more light on that? Yeah, I mean that that scripture is a very popular one, but uh, I mean I'm, I'm now going to you know g give some insight. Insight, yeah. You know, for, that's for, unveiled. That's the, yeah, that's, that's the problem. That, that's the whole purpose unveiling. of unveiling. Yes. That's correct. Unveiling mysteries. You know now. Paul is the one who wrote to Timothy. Timothy was like a protege or more like, more or less a, you know, his spiritual son who had been trained in ministry. Mm. Uh, and Paul was, was start talking to him as a pastor. You know, Pastor Timothy, this is what you need to do. Mm. If you're really going to be successful in your ministry, then you go, you've got to study. 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 Now, study. So, now, that, that, that word study in the a, in a, in a, in a New Testament Greek, we call it an imperative. Imperative means it's more like a command. Commandment. I mean, which means that you cannot be a pastor if you don't study. No, so Paul said, study to show yourself approved. You know, thank God for the anointing. But he didn't say be anointed to show yourself approved. Hmm. He said, study to show yourself approved. A workman who that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing, dividing the word of, of that. Let, let me show you. There's a history behind the, behind the text. The history is that. Uh, you know, in, in the first century church at the time of Jesus and the apostles of Jesus. Are you with your pen and, and paper? Yeah. At the time of the, uh, uh, Paul, uh, when apostles were on earth, after Jesus had ascended to heaven, and then came Paul and all those, all those uh, first century Christians. You know, remember that time period was called, they were under the, the, the what they call the Greco Roman Empire. It, it was the time of the Roman Empire. Palestine was under Roman, you know, Roman domination. Okay? Now, at that time, the Romans were very good civil engineers. They cut straight roads. They're very good in, 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 in roads, cutting, you know, making roads. You know, so they had roads from Rome that went through all the empire. 
including Israel and other countries in the Roman Empire. Don't forget the whole of Europe was under the Roman Empire at the time. You know, but so when Paul said, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly, that phrase rightly dividing mm -hmm. actually is from, from Greek, a Greek participle, which actually means cutting straight, just like the Roman, Roman roads. So that's what Paul was referring to. Paul was making a reference to Roman roads, how they were cut straight. What Paul was saying is that if a, a man of God or a child of God or somebody who wants to preach God's word does not study, he can never cut straight. This it's going to cut zigzag. This is, and this is a problem we have today, especially in Africa. Many people are cutting zigzag mm -hmm. because they're not studying. Uh, doctor, you know, now we really we're getting there. This is, I mean, I this is this is good. Can you tell us about this Bible, uh, this Raman Bible, Bible, Bible College? You see, when God called me in 1980, He told me that He's called, he called me as a prophet, and obviously yeah. also a teacher, because I'm a prophet and a teacher. You know, uh, I looked at, up to Ken Hagen at that time. Mm. Ken Hagen was like a, a mentor to me at a distance. Okay. You know, I, I really studied all his books and I took inspiration from Ken Hagen. He was a prophet, but he was sound in the word. I believe that every minister must is first a man of the word before the anointing. All right. So, but for me, God called, God gave me a, a vision for Christian education to mm. train to train leaders. Train pastors and uh, you know uh, prophets, evangelists, all other other all Christian leadership. You know, so uh, when God gave, God gave me this vision, 1995 or 96, uh, when I was in Ghana, you know, right, and uh, I had a church in Ghana in 1995. Yeah. Uh, one time uh, we saw a vision of Ora Roberts sitting in, in my church in, in Ghana. I asked the Lord, Lord, what is this? He said Ora Roberts had a vision to establish a Christian university. And I'm, I'm, going, I'm giving you the same type of vision. Hmm. You, you're going to have a Christian university. You're going to have a Christian training. You know, you're going to train leaders for me. And then many people call me, saying how many that they've been having dreams about me. You know, with so many pastors sitting under my feet training them. So I knew wow. that was my calling. And I, I myself I had revelations where you know I, I, I was teaching you know leaders. This is just put it so there. basically, my my calling is about Christian education. That's the thrust of my vision. Mm. And so I, I've studied, I've done degrees up to doctorate. You know, doc, up to doctorate, said, you know, various degrees, so many of them, in theology and biblical studies. Now, so God told me to establish, well, in, in London, when I, I came to London, you know, some years back, about a decade ago, uh, 2008, mm. 2009, we started Rama Bible College. Now, Rama Bible College is a Pentecostal Type of, of Bible school. Pentecostal. Type Pentecostal. Of Bible this is very important. I stress this, because this there are important. so many different Bible schools in the world. Yeah. Not all of them are good. Any Bible school that does not emphasize the Holy Spirit is dead. Really is dead. Wow. Did you hear that? Because if you take the Holy Spirit out of anything, becomes, that thing becomes dead. Yeah. If it does, that's why a, 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 a human being without the indwelling spirit is spiritually dead. A Bible school without the spiritual the emphasis is dead. Mm. You know, look, you can have a, a Bible school with, with a big campus, like a university, but I can tell you this, if there's no Pentecostal, you know, em emphasis, no Holy Spirit, then forget it. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3, 6, he said the, the, the Spirit gives life, but the letter kill it. kill it. The letter is just a raw academic study of the Bible, but without the spiritual, you know, emphasis, it is dead. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, 13, 14, he says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit mm -hmm. because they are spiritually discerned. You know, so it means that Rama Bible College brings the two together. We believe in academic scholarship, sound teaching of the word. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have we are running degree uh, programs from certificate, diploma, bachelor's, master's, you know, and doctorate. We, we have a full range wow. of theological this, education this is together with the spirit. Because I'm a prophet and I'm, I'm also a doctor of theology. This is I, 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 I said to you that we are in capable hands. Uh, my question to you, sir, what are the requirements? For, uh, for admission and, and to the how affordable the, the, the fact is that, let me say this to you, uh, Pastor Celestine, Bible school is not just for pastors. Bible school is for every Christian. You get what I'm saying? I mean, of course, if somebody is going to be a pastor, then it's, it's a good requirement that he, 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 he comes for training. Training is very crucial. You know, the Bible talks in Ephesians 4 uh, verse 11. The Bible says when Christ ascended on high, he gave gifts of men mm -hmm. to men. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for equipping the saints. Saints must be equipped. Yeah, because some people will say, well, I'm called. Or I'm a child of God. Now I belong to a church. 
And uh, my pastor is teaching me. I'm, I'm hearing the word. As well, so why do I need to go through training again outside my school, uh, yeah. outside my church? The reason is that there are two types of, of Bible study. There's devotional Bible study, which is, and then we have academic study of the Bible. Do you hear that? The devotional Bible study is the ones we do, and we pray for God to give us some insight into what we are reading. And that's what pastors do. Pastors who are, who are not theologically enlightened, as all, they, their preaching is based on devotional study. But that is not enough. There are other aspects of the Bible. Mm -hmm. For instance, the Bible we are holding is about New Testament alone. It's about two thousand years removed from us. The Bible has got culture. It has got history behind it. The, the, the people who wrote the Bible, the authors like John, the Apostle Paul, and Co. You know, these guys, most of them were Jews. They come through a culture. Mm -hmm. So when they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, they also wrote through the lens of their culture and their history. If you don't understand that, you you are going to misinterpret the Bible. This let let me give you a good example. In John chapter 4, Jesus met the Samaritan woman. Now, re remember, he met the Samaritan woman at the well of Sychar, Jacob's well. She met the woman, he met the woman alone at the well. Mm -hmm. Now, the author of John, which is Apostle John, gave the time Jesus met the woman at the well, the 12th hour, which is 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Why did John give the time? There's a reason. There's some culture to it. This kind of thing, if you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit, 12 hours, you will never get it. You need to come to Bible school to be taught the, the, the culture, the history. Then also, we have something we call uh, linguistics, which means that the Bible was not written in English or, 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 or Yoruba or Ghanaian languages or any other language for that matter. It was written in Greek in the New Testament, mm. written in Hebrew. Now, the Bible has been translated for us. And whenever there's a translation, many things are missing. So that so means you, you need you, to study Greek. You say you say now. Yeah. Whether you're a pastor, just a, a Christian, you need you, you need, want a deeper insight into the Bible. Yeah. You have to come to Bible. You school. need to go. Through now, let me let me finish what I was saying about George of the Four. Yeah. I'm saying that the author gave the time when Jesus met the woman at the well. The reason the, there's a reason why that that, that, that time was given. What was that reason? The, the reason is that in the Middle East at the time, we call the ancient Near East A and E. Women don't go to the well alone, number one. Mm -hmm. Women don't go to the well in the afternoon. They go either in the morning when it's the cool or in the evening. Wow. The question is, why is this woman going at 12 o'clock? The reason is that this woman has been stigmatized in society. Perhaps people even may, may, may have thought she was a prostitute because she was a woman. Jesus said, you have had five husbands. And the one you have is not even a husband. So this woman is stigmatized. All the women are gossiping about her. That's why she's going alone. She's not joining the group. And she's going at midday because she knows at midday nobody will be at the well. Mm. And Jesus met her at a point of need. Now, tell me, you can pray in tongues, you will never know this. Unless you come to Bible school, unless you are you taught, through this you, you will never get it. Mm. So Bible school is very important. This is very, very important. And uh, I believe viewers, whether you belong to any ministry or you have a very sound pastor, it doesn't matter. What the prophet and the doctor is telling us now is that you need to come to a place like this to be taught. And Jesus said, you err because you do not know the scripture. Well, he's giving us the other side, the, another dimension of the Bible that we all carry. The history, the culture, and everything will be taught. And you will know where you stand and will not be able to make some silly mistakes that other people who do not know. Pastor, I want to ask something. Yeah. There are some people... Uh, some pastors, some men of God, and women of God, they say they are anointed. They are called. So how important is it for them to go through this training? I mean now, the pastor, we're not talking about the general uh, or, or believers. The pastors that are called shepherd. That, see, that the Bible says, I have, I send you pastors to feed you. So what I'm talking about, are they, what, how important is it for them not just to rely on the calling and the anointing and having... You see, there are two dimensions to every calling. The knowledge dimension and the power dimension. Mm. The, the two must harmonize. They must mm. go together. Did you see, power without knowledge is, 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 is dangerous. You know, I mean, look at Samson, for example. Oh, who was yeah. anointed like Samson? But Samson didn't have knowledge and wisdom. He died just like, like, like that. He died in disgrace. Mm. You know, because if you don't have wisdom and knowledge, demons will, 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 will destroy you on the way. Many pastors and men of, men of God have seen. So you are saying having the anointing. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not Jesus. That you I, need the revelation. Jesus was a man of power and wisdom. You need power and wisdom. The two must go together. And, the Bible and wisdom says, is derived from knowledge. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is a practical application of knowledge. 
and we are talking about knowledge of scripture, deep insight into the word of God. You get what I'm saying? Now, at the end of the day, look at this. The main purpose for every man of God is teaching or uh, and preaching. Teaching or preaching. Mm. Anointing is the supernatural aspect of it. Because a, a man of God, a pastor, apostle, whatever, your first priority, your first call, primary task, is to transform lives by the preaching or oh, and the word. teaching of the word of God. Yeah. So if you don't know the word, how are you going to transform lives? It will be difficult. How are you going to do it? You, there will you, be no you, communication. You, you, there will be no communication. So Ephesians 4.11 Jesus said he, he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, yes. pastors, and teachers. Question, why did he give them? He said, what? For the equipping of the saints. the saints. The word equip also means to prepare the saints. Yeah. Or to, to train the saints. We do that with, with the scriptures. We prepare the saints through the scriptures. The anointing is for impartation. That's a different dimension altogether. Anointing alone is not enough. I mean, look at something in the Bible. Mm. Look at how he was the most anointed man, anointed judge at his time. But he died a miserable death. Because he went because to the there sin. Was no knowledge. There was no knowledge. He went into sin and got entrapped, and then he was destroyed. This happened, sadly, to many, many, many leaders, even today. You know, so a man of God must spend time with the word, and he must get training in the word. He must go to Bible school to get deeper understanding, to be able to interpret the scriptures correctly. Mm. Look, at, look, look, judge, uh, uh, the, the book of James, 3 verse 1. There's a warning, even for leaders. It said, Let no many become teachers. For they Let shall be no judged, many become, be, become teachers. teachers. They shall be ju- judged more strictly. Which means that if you do, if you're not sound in the Pastors, word, do you hear if, that? If, if you're not accurate, accurately taught the word, and you begin to teach error, you're going to be judged. There's judgment for leaders who teach inaccurately. In Matthew five eighteen, Jesus says something. He said, "Till heaven and earth pass away, no one jot or tittle shall pass from the law mm. until all are fulfilled." Then he went on to give a warning. He says that whosoever therefore break one of the least of these commandments and teach men so shall be least in the kingdom least so you can do miracles and everything and be least in the kingdom because of your your, your knowledge base is because weak shallow it's shallow look at uh, uh, jeremiah three fifteen. god said i shall give you shepherds or pastors after my heart after my who shall heart. teach my people feed them now if you have not knowledgeable how are you going to feed the people so you can you can have a man of God who does signs and wonders miracles, mm. but all his his, his yeah. flock are skinny; they are dying or they are dead because they are not being fed. There is nothing to feed them with. Ooh. Knowledge is power. Is important. This is powerful. Knowledge is power. It's, it, it, it's so important. You hear that? The Bible, the Bible says, "Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of our times." Mm. Stability. You see, people who are going to last in ministry are men of knowledge and wisdom. They are the ones who are going to last. Mm. You know. You see how important people of power that knowledge don't last. Uh, Samson is an example. Doctor. Um, what you have uh, given us so far, this is powerful. Uh, myself, I'm learning Amen. because I know what it means to go through this uh, college. I have been here. Be Rama, Rama. I've been your student you, 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 for some you, 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 you time. Can testify. So now, uh, what I want the audience to know again is, uh, you know, there's this, some people, uh, I think the class of doctrine or something. Some people, I don't know how you you bring that to, you know, you, you, uh, 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 teach that. Some people believe they don't take um, holy communion, some do believe. And in your college, when you have this, how do you uh, kind of glide through and, and, and bring out something for people? You see, how do you... you see, in fact, it's good you ask this question because whenever you approach the Bible and you want to interpret the Bible, the reason why we have so many people with different groups, with different doctrines, it's all based on interpretation. What we call in Bible school, we call it exegesis. Which means that, you see, the Bible was not originally written to us. It was written to a, set, a, a different audience. Mm. For instance, when Paul wrote Corinthians, he was writing to Corinthians. He wasn't writing to you. He was not writing to Nigerians or Ghanaians or, or Zimbabweans or South Africans. He was writing to Corinthians. You know, so there's something, something we call historical context. Historical context. Because context means that what was going on in the Corinthian church at the time. At the time. That made Paul write what he wrote. You must understand that before you can you know, apply it to today. If you don't understand that, you're going to have a wrong application. In France, a good example is that Paul told some women to be silent in the church. You know, today no. people are making a doctrine out of that. Thank you very much because I need you to throw more light on that because that one is something that people are asking me yeah, all over the place. Exactly. So and, 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 and it all has to do with this historical context. You know, whenever you open any Bible, Bible book like John, uh, Revelation, you must ask yourself first question. Who wrote this book? To whom did he write? This is very important. 
Now, when you're going to find it at, at, the, at, at the opening of, of, of the book, for instance, First Corinthians 1 1, it says, Paul, an apostle by the will of God, and sustains our brother to the church of God at Corinth. So, you see, they are writing to Corinthians first. They want to write it. They, Paul never even knew that you will ever exist. <laughs> he never knew that, that you, will, you will ever, you know, in fact, he, he, he never even knew that what he wrote, the letter he wrote, just like an other letter you write to somebody, will become part of a Bible. He never knew. So, he was writing to Corinthians. So anything is said to the Corinthians, we must do research to find out what was going on then wow. that caused Paul to write to them. For instance, First Corinthians 7 verse 1, Paul said, concerning the things you wrote to me about, it is good for a I'm man sorry. not to touch a woman. Blah, blah, blah. Concerning the things you wrote to me. So I mean, the Corinthian Christian wrote to Paul with some questions. We don't have the questions. We only have his answer. So we, we, we have to do exegesis. We must reconstruct the letter, find out what may have been going on. We have, we have to research before we start applying, before we tell women today not to, to cover their hair. We have to under, interpret the Bible correctly. So when we do exegesis, mm. we find the original meaning of the text. Mm. What was Paul saying to them? Why was he saying what he said to them? Until we find that reason, we can't generalize today. For instance, you know, women must be selling check. Could it be that some women were, were, were disturbing while Paul was preaching that particular time in that particular church? And so Paul said that we don't, it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. So we, we cannot peel the Bible today and just tell all women to cover their head. <laughs> see, that's error. A lot of people like I, I see some doctrinal error. Some denomination. Oh that yes. If you don't cover your oh, head, oh, they will even chase you out of the church. That's what I'm saying. They will even chase and you. And again, so one of the questions. So I, I'm happy that we are with the doctor. Of, yeah. uh, I mean, who, who who's been there? Uh, somebody was saying. Why would women not wear trousers? Why would women? So what can you tell I mean, us the, about? The, the, this scripture also picked from Genesis. You know, I, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Deuteronomy. There's a scripture in Deuteronomy, uh, you know, where, where Moses told the Israelites, he said, let a man not put on a woman's dress, let a woman put on so, blah, blah, yeah, blah, blah. We want, we want to yeah, yeah, the, the, the point is, that again, the same, this, we come back to the same point. The question is, why did Moses say that to them? The question is, what dress were they putting on? Now, the dresses Jews put on is not what Nigerians put on. They are two different cultures altogether. You get what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, you know, why did Moses tell them you know, that a man was not put on a woman's dress? A woman? There could be a, a, a context to it, a historical context. That we now, that's why in Bible school we do research, biblical research. This is why it is important. It's important for the Bible school. Raman, Bible because, be, because in that same chapter, that same chapter where Moses told them, that a man must not put a woman's dress. Woman. He also told them that when they, they build a house, they must build a parapet around the house. I'm sure many many old people are watching are watching this or listening. I don't even know what a parapet is. Can you throw more light? A on parapet the is you see in those days when a Jew built a house, the roof is flat. Now and people sleep on the roof, flat roof. Now because of that, they have to put a parapet is like a, a, a guard rail around uh, the roof. So if somebody is sleeping and by mistake he sleepwalks he won't fall down to death so moses said build a parapet around on your roof so that somebody will not be will, will, will not will not be guilty of bloodshed now tell me how many people put buildings today with parapets because he was talking to jews israelites so we have to do research to find out why they now look now we're in a different culture now we live in the 21st century where for instance we are in the uk right now yes. sometimes the temperature is minus six degrees centigrade and you are telling a woman not to put her in man's dress not to put because jeans so when it comes to chat with jeans in cold freezing cold you walk him her out it doesn't make sense this is the abuse of scripture that's all god is saying thank you thank you thank you man of god thank you and uh, what are the advantages of attending this uh, bible college like Ram in rama bible college yes. when they come they're going to combine serious knowledge of the scripture with, with, with the spirit you know what i mean is that we, we, we believe in the, in the prophetic ministry i'm a prophet of god an international prophet i've been to so many countries i've been to nigeria ghana south africa u.s all over the place i've been to caribbean bermuda different places I'm, I'm called to to teach about prophecy i've written a book three books yeah. prophecy and prophets ministry gifts i even do short short courses as well you know uh, for said we have certificate in prophecy certificate in ministry because and all christians need solid grounding all these basics and thank god on, on my our website which i'm sure to come on the screen www.rambabiblecollege.org i have a whole course on on on, on the on the what on the website 20 dvds anybody in anywhere in the world can do the course on on, on the internet now there's a preview of of two Two minutes for every lecture. There are ten lectures on the certificate in prophecy, ten lectures on the certificate in ministry. Once they pay, they, they pay the fees. 
you know, and I'm, I'm sure my, my number will be the one they call me. We can yeah, talk about we'll it. Put the number yeah, on the you know, while, while they call and they pay, they pay the fees. You know, depending on where they are, they are in the world, then they can watch all the 20, 20 lectures. When they finish, I send them a, a multiple choice test. They get certificates and those from the US. Listen, people coming to Rama have a great advantage because you so we believe in the charismatic Pentecostal, That's you know, right. emphasis. We are spiritual. You know, we we are not a dead Bible school. We are a living Bible school. You know, and they will learn so much. They will learn a lot, and we have all, we can cater for anybody from scratch. Yeah. A, a person who has not been to Bible school before can start from certificate and then go to diploma, go to bachelor's, That's go it. to master's, That's and it. then go to doctorate, mm. master of divinity. Right now, we even have doctoral candidates right now, so we have the full range. Yeah. Also, also the courses are just once a week or twice a week. Yeah. We have Saturday only two hours on Saturday, and Thursday you know two two hours in the evening, uh, you know, and and the fees are moderate. You know, for those who can't pay the fees for one whole year, they we have installment plan. They can pay one uh, uh, monthly. We have fees as well as hundred pounds a month. Do you hear? Uh, hundred pounds a month. You, you, you can enroll. Do you hear that? You know, on the course, doctor. I'm just asking this for the viewers' sake because I'm one of your students. Right. I, I was I was here and I know what we we've got here. And um, for the viewers' sake, I want to ask you this question. Yeah. What qualifications are attained after attending Rama College, Rama yeah, Bible? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. It depends on the level. The level. And the, 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 how the, is the entry. graduation like? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, we have for those who come from scratch, who want to start from scratch, they don't have any qualifications at all. We are them for certificate in prophecy or certificate in ministry or certificate in biblical studies. All this are on the website. They, from there, they can progress to diploma. Certificate can last about an hour, one year, depending on how many times they come. If they come two, two times a, a week, Saturday morning, two hours, and they all, or Thursday evening, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. We have Thursday evening, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and Saturday morning, uh, things from about 10 to 12. They can finish the certificate in one year, and then they can wow. do a diploma in two years. They can powerful. do a degree in three years. That's powerful. And then after that, they can come for an MA is one year. We have, we have Saturday eve, afternoon batch, Monday afternoon batch, then we, then we have Master of Divinity, the next step after Master's. After Master of Divinity, we have the Doctor of Ministry, which is a terminal degree. That's the highest. powerful. That's you know what I'm saying? So we cater for everyone. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and they, they can enroll any time of the year. Yeah. That. Viewers, we, we, don't, we don't have any specific entry. Viewers, entry, entry with entry all point. the details on the screen, you are uh, be able to reach this college. I tell you what, this is one of the best places to be because I've been here. Viewers, we've come to the end of today's show, and I know you are blessed. And give us the feedback. Let us know what you think about what we're doing. We're trying to reach everybody, every, all believers around the, around the world. And right now, if you have anything to advertise, we have a platform for that. We'll bring what you have to sell, bring what you have to show to the world, and we'll help you, we'll promote you in, on this, on the unveil with Pastor Celestine. Unveiling the mysteries behind so many questions that you want to ask. And today, we thank you for listening to the doctor and to myself, Pastor Celestine. Goodbye. See you next time.